All right, congratulations. How are you feeling? Good, good. A little, little banged up. You know, I have uh, another cut. I had to get stitched up. So, uh, you know, that's like three in a row now. And I've had like 36 pro fights, never had a cut. And now it's three back to back to back. Are they always in the same spot? No, different spots. The last one was kind of small. Uh, the, the other one was pretty damn big. And this one was a good size. But off of a win, I'll, I'll take cuts. I don't mind it. So was this fight week a little weird for you? You know, new opponent. Can you kind of talk us through that? Yeah, it was. Um, it's kind of like a weird feeling when you're prepared to make bantamweight and you're just about to go through a weight cut, mentally preparing yourself, and then they hit you with the switch up uh, three days notice. You know, um, I'm just happy Kevin, you know, came in and, and took this fight on three days, and he's a natural featherweight, so I wasn't going to get him down to bantamweight. And it's kind of like, what could you say? You know, I'm, I'm already here. I'm here to fight, so let's do it. So how different was it going in there? You know, different weight, different opponent. I mean, for me, I fought at 45 earlier on my, in my career, and then in the UFC I have as well, but against other bantamweights, so it was more of a fair kind of thing. Um, I'm sure he had some weight on me, but I believe in, in my strength, you know, for, for bantamweight, so it wasn't a thing. You know, even in the third round, you could see I had the strength advantage there. I was able to kind of manhandle and, and have a dominant third round, so I wasn't too worried about it. Just the length and the reach was, was something I had to uh, overcome, but uh, I, I felt good in there. Any chance he'll stay at 145? Probably not. I mean, my body, my frame is more, you know, bantamweight. My reach is like, I have like a shorter reach than some flyweight. So it probably wouldn't be the smartest thing, you know. And, and I'm, I'm not the heaviest guy either. Like, outside of camp, I'll get to, you know, 160 if that, you know. But I'm, that's the heaviest I get. So, I mean, these 45ers are walking around like 180. And, you know, who knows how, how much more. But uh, they're much bigger guys. So stay at bantamweight for now. You know, when you have an opponent switch, do you actually try and switch up your game plan or are you going with um, a game plan that's more about you and less about the opponent? I always try to focus on me, you know, what I want to do in there. But it is important to kind of know, like, what this guy brings to the table. You know, we, we try to – I try to have my coaches watch a bunch of film, you know, before – I get in there. You didn't, we didn't have much time, but yeah, we change up a few things. Maybe you're going to, you know, put a lot of forward pressure on this last guy, and then maybe this guy, you're going to have more movement or something like that. There's little changes you have to make, but you don't want to overthink anything and, and, and let it get to your head. So I just try to kind of just be me, you know, and be free in there and improvise. And I know you didn't have a lot of time to think about him, but was there anything about him that surprised you when you got in there? Not really. I mean, he fought kind of how we expected. You know, he does. He he kind of flicks a lot of punches out there. Not like full power, but um, you know, he he felt good in the in the first and second round. You know, he he was landing some stuff on me, good calf kicks, and then. But we kind of saw that he fades in his fights. He kind of gets himself tired almost. I expected a little bit more forward pressure and and a little bit more of him shooting takedowns, but. You know, he fights a featherweight. He was the fights that I got to watch. He's fighting like six foot two guys that maybe he wants to get inside, and then he now he's fighting me. And you know, I'm a lot shorter, smaller than him, so he probably wanted to stay on the outside. So little little differences like that, but nothing crazy. And were you sure that you got the win when it went to the judges, or were you kind of like the the commentary wasn't quite sure? Yeah, I definitely wasn't sure. It's weird. Like, when you're in there, you feel like you're not quite sure. Maybe your corners see it differently. Like, they, they're on the outside. I knew I, the third round could have been a 10-8 if possible. I don't, I don't know. I, I felt like it was, it was possible. But the first two rounds were kind of iffy. I felt he landed more, but I landed – I hurt him more. You know, a couple of shots really rocked him, and, uh, and I had, like, the power advantage. But – it was like, was that enough? You know what I mean? I, I wasn't sure. And then when I heard the 30-27, I thought, well, I definitely got the third round. Like, there's no question, so that has to be me. And how does this year look for you? Uh, when you want to get back in there, a future opponent? It's nice to start early, you know, January, first card of the year. Um, I was happy about that. I'd like to fight four times this year, you know, um, stay active, um, God willing, and, and uh, you know, because – I like momentum, you know, back-to-back -back wins. It feels good to, to have that victory behind you and kind of move forward with it. So next time they're in New York, I'm down for that. Uh, but I now I'm hearing rumors it might not be in April. I was, I was thinking that would be a good timing for me. But, yeah, uh, anytime they, they come back to New York, I definitely want to fight in front of my home fans again. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, Brian. How you doing? Uh, it looked like you wanted to say something on the mic in the octagon. Uh, what do you want to say? I was going to say, Las Vegas, can I get a boom? <laughs> um, is, there any, is there anyone specifically that, that, that you want to fight next? 
no one's specific, you know, and it's kind of like, I, I think it's like the first time I haven't really had anything in my head lined up. And then, you know, with the opponent change and this and that, uh, the only thing I could think of, like, uh, on the top of my head is, you know, uh, my original opponent, Saeed, you know, he, he got COVID and wasn't able to fight. I imagine they want to book him soon, you know, so maybe we could work something out with that and I could turn around. I mean, now I got a cut uh, on my eye, so I, I can't do it in the next few weeks, but uh, I, would, I would have been down for that. Uh, I wanted your opinion on uh, Bryce Mitchell's rap album. Did you have a chance to listen to it? Uh, I haven't listened to the whole thing. I heard a couple of sound bites. I heard like, uh, what's that, the, uh, Darkensaw or something like that. It's pretty cool. No, I mean, props to, Br I like Bryce. He's a funny guy. Um, you know, props to him for, for putting that out there. I think it's cool. I think, I think Ariel was saying we need to get a rap battle on the MMA hour, me versus Bryce. So that would be cool to settle, see who's the best rapper in, uh, in the UFC. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Are, are you down for that? I'm down. Let's do it. Are we gonna get a boom a, a boom album? This? Business is booming album coming out. We gotta put we gotta lay it out. I have a bunch of songs. I just I never really released anything. A couple are on Spotify. I recorded a bunch, but you really want to like when you release something, you want it to be like legit. You know, like there's so much good music out there. No one cares, but like if you're a UFC fighter and you release an album, it's kind of you know it's interesting. So I'm waiting to like you know do something big with that. Congrats. Thank you. What's your creative process in that? Do you put the track down first and then, then you let the lyrics come to you or do you, let the, do you do your lyrics first and then you work the track around it? No, yeah, you know what? I haven't been active lately as much because I've just been focused on fighting. But when I do do it, I usually listen to the beat first, kind of get a feel, you know, let myself feel that, what kind of like rhythm I want to go with, what kind of speed I want to rap with, and then I'll, I'll write from there. But I got to get better at remembering my raps. I, I, people get mad if you're reading off a screen, you know? Like, even if it's good, they're just like, you're reading, bro. Every musician has that same problem. Yeah. Well, um, just going back to the fight, you know, you talked about uh, fighting at featherweight. You know, that's not your ideal thing, but you do go through it. You felt stronger. How much extra confidence does that give you knowing that you can go up and that you can overpower a, a bigger opponent? I mean, it's a good feeling to know, like, you can adapt and, and, and go back and forth between weight classes because, you know, that leaves more opportunities. If, if someone wants to fight short notice and they can't make 135, I'm a guy that's, you know, willing to do it and, and say, hey, it doesn't matter. Like, he's a featherweight. He came in. I appreciate it. Let's do it. So, you know, I always want to uh, seize the opportunities that come. So, um, you know, with the strength thing, yeah, I feel, I feel fine so far. Anybody I have fought at 145, I felt, you know, nobody – overpowered me or made me feel like, oh, I got to get, I got to get back down to band. like, I can't do this, you know? So if they tried to come at you again with an omen, how far in advance would you rather that they try to let you know that you have a fight? I mean, if, it, if they gave you, you know, two, three months, would you gladly look at that? Or would you still say, I'd rather take a band and weight fight instead? No, I mean, I'm a natural band and weight. Like I said, you know, if there's like time in advance, like preparation wise, like I'm definitely band and weight. I mean, I can get myself, you know, down to 150, and before I come into fight week and you know that's like normal for a bantamweight so I would prefer to stay there just with my size and reach and everything but with the short notice thing if they called me and said like hey like you want to fight in two three weeks that's when I would try to work out something at featherweight just because you know you're killing yourself to cut weight and then try to perform at your optimal best so that's how I look at things cool and uh no that's it congrats on the win buddy thank you appreciate it Thank you.